Hey Bulls and Bears, it's Wednesday, August 4th, 2021. Thank you for joining me. Back with another dose of economic reality today. And let's get it out of the way right up front here. The economy is being decimated and most people do not realize it. I should say the economy has been decimated and there is no recovery. Right? What's being called an economic recovery is just simply not true. Uh, people are getting buried under more debt. People are having to take out bigger and bigger loans just to keep up with the Joneses, to keep up with the next door neighbors. And so, of course, we continue to see debt just skyrocket. Well, let's take a look at these just awful jobs numbers. And maybe you can tell me down in comments after we look at the numbers where the economic recovery is at. This just out today, CNBC, private companies added 330,000 jobs in July, and that fell short of the estimated 653,000. All right, so that's not just a miss. That is completely in another galaxy. I mean, this is like half of what they estimated, um, slightly more than half, but this is just bad, bad, bad. Let's take a look at just last week's numbers as far as the new jobless filings and see what those were. And we're going to get the new one tomorrow on Thursday, August uh, 5th. But let's just look at this monthly number for jobs added in July. Remember this number, 330,000. 330,000. Just last week alone, we saw 373,000 new jobless claims. So let's put this into perspective. We are losing more jobs in a week than we are gaining in the private sector in a month. So if we just look at these recent numbers, we're losing four times as many jobs as are being gained in the private sector. Now, of course, there's the government jobs, but it seems like pretty soon that's all it's going to be. Is everyone going to end up working for the government? All right. Private companies, especially smaller companies, are having a harder and harder time just staying open. And I can point to a lot of YouTubers that have went around and went to different areas, different shopping districts, and showed you all the businesses that are closed and never to be reopened again. In some areas, it's as high as 20 to 30% of all businesses that did not survive this last economic shutdown. But it seems like all I hear when I listen to the, the major financial news networks and business news networks is how great the economy is doing, how it's recovering, Right. And again, they're pointing at the markets, the markets, the housing market, of course, the stock market. They can point to higher numbers all day, higher prices. But is that better off for the average person at the end of the day? Well, let's see the housing market. We've got a record number of investors and major companies coming in and buying homes. And while, yes, being a home seller, that may be good. You may be getting a higher price when you sell to a corporation. And let's be honest, a lot of times these corporations are just funded by the Fed. So essentially, it's a backdoor way of the Fed to own the homes, to own real estate. Yes, the Fed, they do buy debt, they buy corporate debt, and they have a whole bunch of banks that are considered primary dealers that they basically fund and keep operational, right? But as a home seller, because I've heard a few people comment on this, as a home seller, yes, you will get more money if you sell to a corporation. They can pretty much outbid any private party or individual or family that's looking to uh, try to buy a home. And I'm sure if they had more um, foot soldiers on the ground, these banks could probably, these institutions and investors could probably buy a lot more homes than they already are buying, which is scary. But yes, you may get more money as a seller selling to a corporation if you're selling your home. But then what's going to happen when you go to look for a new place to live, either renting or buying a home, you're going to have companies maybe outbidding you for the home that you're looking to buy or to move into, or maybe you'll have to rent now because home prices are so high um, that even though you made money on the home that you sold, you now cannot find a good place to rent because rents are being pushed up because of all the corporate money blasted into the housing market right now. All right, remember, high home prices also push up rents because people are then forced to rent because they can't get the home that they wanted to buy. All right, let's go over to this news article right here. And this is out of Fox. And this one knocked me out of my chair almost here. Growth in U.S. services sector hits record in July. That's supposed to be 
good news. Well, here's the not so good news. Service sector jobs are not the best paying jobs. And in fact, they, in a lot of cases, do not even keep up with the rising cost of living. So we're seeing more and more service sector jobs, less manufacturing jobs. And actually, if you go down into this article, it says on Monday, ISM reported that growth in manufacturing has slowed for a second straight month amid ongoing supply chain problems. Now, let's be clear again, there are some people making a lot of money in this current economy, especially if you get into the right asset at the right time. Let's take a look at a recent run up in a stock here, Robinhood surged 81% in second day of trading, right? So I'm sure a lot of day traders, a lot of institutional investors made out like bandits today on this stock. But what about the rest of the population? Are most people just sitting by, uh, sitting behind a screen on their computer day trading stocks? Or do people actually have to live a life in some cases, right? Not everyone can be a hedge fund trader or a day trader and sit behind their computer all day. Uh, some people actually like to get out in the real world and do things. Now, maybe they're just trading for a few hours in the morning and maybe they're making a lot of money. But again, what portion of the population is making money on these types of trades and making money off of this type of volatility? Well, I'll bet you 90% of it's institutional money. Big trading firms that have all the data on what little investors are doing with their money. So they know exactly when to buy, when to sell. And we've reported here on the institutions that are just making record profits, the banks that are making record profits at their trading desks. All right, people? So this jobs data and the types of jobs that are being added, the service sector jobs, leisure, hospitality, fast food, etc., is not going to dig anyone out of poverty. And in fact, we're going to see more people get into more debt debt continues to increase and that's what the economy is right now. It's people taking on debt, borrowing, spending money. And yes, when people spend money, it does create jobs. You need somebody on the other side of the transaction there to run the credit cards, uh, to work the cash register, to stock the shelves, absolutely. But are these jobs gonna get any people out of poverty? Or are they gonna help people gain enough wealth where they're gonna be independent. Well, I kind of doubt it. But uh, I guess nothing to worry about. Janet Yellen says all we have to do is spend a few trillion dollars and uh, the US is gonna be the global dominant nation. Uh, pretty simple, right? All you have to do is create money out of thin air for different projects uh, and that's all you have to do. So it uh, looks like everything's fine according to Yellen. I guess she's the expert here. Well, isn't it funny that under the control of these quote unquote experts, the U.S. economy and the debt levels have gotten to where we are right now. But nobody wants to ask that question. Nobody wants to question the quote-unquote experts that are telling us everything is going to be fine if we just spend more money. Um, buckle up, folks. Keep preparing. Hope you're doing well. Keep stacking. Bye for now.